Hey there, Angular folks, and welcome back. This here is an Angular form. It has a username field, and that field should check the server to see if the username exists as the user types. Easy enough, right? But there's a twist. This form uses the new Signal Forms API. So how do we add async validators with Signal Forms? Well, that's what you'll learn in this tutorial. And don't worry, it's pretty simple. But first, let's see how it works before we make any changes. When I click in and remove the username and then blur out, we get the required error. Perfect, that's expected. Same thing with email, blur it out. And the required message pops up. And if I type an invalid email, we get the invalid email message. All good so far. But what we really want is a way to check whether the username already exists on the server and show that error immediately while the user is typing. If you've done this in reactive forms or template driven forms, you know the general idea. But with the new Experimental Signal Forms API, the pattern is different. And that's what we're about to implement. Okay, let's switch over to the HTML so we can see what's powering all of this. Here's our username field. With signal forms, we use the field directive to bind the control to the input. Then we have a couple of template variables, one that stores the control signal and another that makes it easy to check whether the field is in an error state after the user interacts with it using the touched and invalid states of the control. Below that, we loop through the field's validation errors and display them based on the value of this variable. And it's the same setup for the email field, the field binding, the variables, and the conditional error messages. Right now, everything is purely client side, nothing async yet. All right, let's switch to the component TypeScript. At the top, we've got our model signal. This is the source of truth for the form, and it stores the form state as a signal. Then here we create the form using the new form function from the signal forms API, where we define our validation. We've got a required validator on the username field, required on email, and an email validator to check for a valid email format. This is how you apply built-in validators with signal forms. And below that, we have a method that simulates a server call to check whether a username exists. On the server, admin, test, and Brian are all taken. Right now, this method isn't used at all. So let's fix that. Async validation means we want Angular to check the server after the user types their username. We'll add this validator inside our form setup right alongside the other validators. And for this, Signal Forms gives us a validate async method. We pass in the field we want to validate, in this case, username, and then an options object. Next, let's define the params function. This lets us customize what value gets passed into the async process. Value gives us the current username value. We only want to run the async validator if the user has typed something meaningful. So if the value is empty or shorter than three characters, we return undefined. Returning undefined tells Angular, hey, don't run the async validator right now. Returning the value means, yes, go validate this. Next up, we need a factory. This creates the actual async resource Angular will use. For this, we'll use a resource. This is Angular's way of handling async data over time. It's like a signal designed for async operations. Inside the resource, we need a loader. This is the async function that actually hits the server, or in our case, the fake server. So available, is gonna be either true or false. If false, that means the username is taken and we need to show an error. Now we need to turn that Boolean result into an actual error if needed. For this, we add the onSuccess property. 
If the username is taken, we return a custom error. To do this, we'll use the new custom error function. For this, we need to add an error kind, essentially the type of error, in this case, username taken. Then we need to provide the message to display for this error. Then, if we don't have an error, we'll return null because everything is good. This kind property is super helpful because we can look for it in the template later. We'll see this in a minute. Finally, we add an on error handler in case the async operation has any issues. If anything unexpected happens during validation, we'll log it and return null so the field doesn't stay invalid. And at this point, our async validator is ready. Now let's switch back to the HTML to add this to the UI. With the async validator, we have access to a pending signal, which is true whenever the validator is running. So after our username input, let's add a pending message using this new signal. This will now show up while the async validator is running. Then we already have a condition to list out any error messages, but unfortunately we can't use this same loop. Async errors feel different. We don't want to force people to blur the field before they see them. So instead of touched, we need to use dirty. Then we'll add the same errors loop. Then within this, we'll check if it's the username taken error. Then we'll add the string interpolated value of our error message. This gives the user immediate feedback as they type. Okay, that should be everything we need, so let's save everything and try it out. All right, let's type a username we know is already taken. And as we do, we can see the pending message below the field. Then, once the request is received, we get the error message letting us know this username already exists. Let's try another name. Oops, that one is already taken too. Finally, once we add one that's available, the error disappears. Nice. Our async validation is working exactly how we expect, but we probably should debounce this, right? So that we're not hitting our server on every keystroke. Debouncing this validator is now incredibly easy with signal forms. All we have to do is go back into our form configuration and add the debounce helper, the same way we use the built-in validator helpers. We just pass in the username field, followed by the duration we want to debounce. Let's go with 500 milliseconds. Okay, cool. Let's save and try it again. Nice. The behavior is the same, but now it's hitting the server a lot less often. Pretty cool, right? And that's how you add async validation to signal forms. Clean code, great UX, and hopefully a simpler flow than the old form setups. You learned how to use validate async, how to hook it into a resource, how to show pending states, how to display custom async errors, and how to debounce your validator to avoid unnecessary server calls. If this helped you, hit like and subscribe for more Signal Forms tutorials, because I've got plenty more coming up. And hey, if you want to show a little Angular Pride off camera, check out the Shieldworks tees and hoodies below. They're built for devs who treat this work like a real craft. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.